Okay, I hope you can see my screen again. Yes. Yes, it's clear. Okay, so I was discussing the Python syntax compared to the other languages. Python uses new lines to complete its command uh, compared to the other languages, which use semicolons or parentheses. We will be looking uh, looking how it happens uh, in a short while. Okay. So again, we have some features with uh, the most important ones. It is free and open source. It is a high level language. Now Python is in the high level, level language. That means the English type of code that we write is basically converted to a machine language that is in terms of zeros and ones. And that is how our programs are executed. Okay, uh, now we can see the most important point that I would discuss here is Python is extensible. That means that you can integrate it with any component of Java, C++, and also you can uh, invoke the C and C++ libraries into your Python code to uh, complete several tasks. Okay, now we will be looking uh, forward to the installation of Python. So I want you all to work with me simultaneously so that you can get uh, Python installed in your systems and uh, then we can move forward to the coding. Okay, so we'll be discussing the installation of Python, just a sec. Okay. Okay, so to install Python, I would I want uh, to you all to go to this uh, Python. I will be pasting this link in the chat. So the, you all can go to this link and get your Pythons installed. Okay, you can find the link to the Python on your charts. You can click on them and get your Python installed. I will guide you to you. Okay, so we have Python. .org. So you see, I hope you all can sh uh, see my screen. Just let me know if you're not able to. We can see it. Okay, so this is the python.org website, the link that I just shared. So you can go to the downloads and there you have the Python 3.10.2. So you can install this. So it will be installed in your system. The installation procedure is same as any other software. You just have to click on this executable file will be installed and you just have to run the whole installation. I hope you don't find a problem in that. Okay. Now I'll be discussing IDEs with you. Now, what is an IDE? Integrated Development Environment, which basically offers uh, development ab abilities that makes your programming experience simpler and easier. It also consists of source code editor, automation tools, and debuggers, which is basically used to check errors in your programs while you code. Okay, now I'll be discussing different types of IDE. Uh, we have different types of IDE present. We have uh, IDLE. Sorry. We have IDLE, which is basically a default editor that comes uh, with whenever we install the Python. Just now, how you have installed the Python. So IDLE is an integrated uh, development environment. That is a default one. Next, we have PyCharm. Now, now the PyCharm IDE is very widely used, and it is created by JetBrains. If you want, you can even uh, code in Python using PyCharm. You can download it. It's, again, simple. Uh, go to the Google, download PyCharm, and you can get your PyCharm installed. You have Visual Studio Code, which is basically an open source free IDE created by Microsoft. And then we have Jupyter, which is uh, the IDE we will be going to use now. I will tell you how to install it. I'll guide you to it. And also, you, uh, it is widely used in the field of data science. It allows live code sharing and visualization, which makes it very uh, useful to use in data science. Okay. 
Next, we have uh, Jupiter. Now, in order to install Jupiter, we need uh, something uh, that is known as Anaconda. Now, Anaconda is kind of a distributed uh, coding environment that is needed in order to run Jupyter Notebook on your systems. So what is exactly Jupyter? Jupyter Notebook is an open source web application. It creates and shares documents that contain live code, visualizations, and narrative text. And what are the uses of Jupyter? It is used in data science again. So it involves data cleaning, transformation, data visualization, machine learning, all these usually happen in Jupyter Notebook. It has a support over 40 programming languages, including Python. Python is a requirement for installing the Jupyter as discussed. Okay, now we have to install Anaconda. So I will again send you the link so that you can install Anaconda from anaconda.com, similar to how you install the Python. Okay, so you have to go to the anaconda.com. Okay, I hope you all can see my screen since some of you are facing the problem. So anaconda.com, you see you have, go to the products, you have individual edition. Click on individual edition. You will see your download button there, Anaconda individual edition. So all of you can click on this. Uh, this is this will automatically install Python 3.9 for you, uh, having 64-bit system. For all of you who have 64-bit, you can download this. Similarly, when you download this, you will have an exe file that you can install in your system. Just it is very similar. The installation process process is very easy, similar to the other softwares that we install. Okay. Now let's move to. This is how we install Anaconda. Now, I told you Anaconda is important, necessary to download Jupyter. Now, I want you all uh, to go to Anaconda just after you have installed Anaconda uh, in your systems. I want all of you to go to the Anaconda prompt. So I'm sure most some of you may be uh, following along, along. Are you following along with me? Yes, we are. Okay, that's great, that's great. If you have any queries, please uh, feel free to send me a message. I will answer as soon as I see it. Okay. So now we have, um, and now after installing the Anacondas, you have to go to your search, Windows search, and you can type Anaconda prompt. If you have Anaconda installed properly on your systems, you will find this Anaconda prompt. Okay, so you can see this Anaconda prompt. Now, uh, what you have to do is you have to type two commands. That is conda install Jupyter. This is the command you need to uh, write down so that you can uh, the Jupyter can be installed in your systems. Yes, I have also noted the commands here. After, after you, if it is installed correctly, you will have no problem in installing Jupyter as well. Since I've already have installed it in my system, I will not be giving this command again. After you, after Jupyter is installed, after you give this command, you have to give another command to install Jupyter Notebook. So this will be like this. You have to write it down. Same here in Anaconda prompt. Jupyter Notebook. So when you give write this command, you have to press enter, and you will see that the Jupyter Notebook is launched. So is anyone able to install uh, Anaconda correctly and uh, launch the Jupyter Notebook? Okay. 
Ah, uh, okay. Uh, please repeat the steps of installation. Okay, you want me to repeat? Okay, so let me start with Anaconda because uh, I told you for Jupyter, you need Anaconda. You don't have to separately download, install Python. You can directly start with Anaconda. So go to oh. anaconda.com. I sent the link in the chat. Go to anaconda.com and the home page you will see in the product section, individual edition. Click on individual edition, you will find Anaconda individual edition download button. Click on the download button and an executable file will be downloaded on your system. You just have to run it. You have to run the installation process. Click next and follow, follow along and I'm, I hope you will be installed correctly. It's a very simple process. Okay. Is it done? I hope it's done for some of you. Okay. So for those who have Anaconda installed properly, you can just go to Anaconda prompt. In Anaconda prompt, I told you, you can uh, download, you can write the command conda install Jupyter. This is the command you need to write down, conda install Jupyter. When you write down this command, Jupyter will itself get installed on your systems. And to launch Jupyter Notebook, you have to give the command Jupyter Notebook. You can see here, I wrote Jupyter Notebook. And my notebook was launched on the browser you are using. It may be Google Chrome or whichever browser you all are using. OK, so th now the Jupyter Notebook is launched. So I will tell you how do we create a new notebook. You can see it has many folders. It has many uh, already built in uh, notebooks. So if we want to create a new notebook, we go to the new button and click on Python 3. So when we click on Python 3, you see uh, I have a new notebook open. And this is where we are going to write our program. So you can see it's basically like an interpreter. You write your programs and they will be executed. You have a run button and they, you can execute them right away. OK, so I hope uh, some of you are done with installation of Anaconda and Jupyter. Yes. Okay, Conda install Jupyter and Jupyter Notebook to launch the notebook after installation. Okay, I hope it's clear. Okay, let's move forward. Okay, now I have uh, another uh, easy thing for you all. If you want to avoid installation of Jupyter or Anaconda, you can uh, use Google Collab. Now, Google Collab is again uh, a coding environment which doesn't need you to install any kind of softwares. You simply have to uh, go to Google. Uh, you have to write Google Collab. I hope you all can see Google Collab and you can just go to the first link that it shows. Welcome to Collaboratory. You do not need to install Python, Anaconda or Jupyter for this. It just works with the internet. So you see you can have a new notebook option here as well. Click on new notebook and you will have a new notebook open for your coding. Similar to Jupyter notebook, not much of a difference, but yes, Jupyter is um, a whole ideally compared to um, Google Collab, Collab, which is just an easier way to execute your programs in Python. So most of, for most of you, I think you are not, I do, I'm not sure if you're able to install Anacondas and Jupyter. So uh, to, to, to you all, I want you to use uh, Google Collab and let's get started with coding. OK, now uh, we will be, we'll be starting with uh, Python. So the little uh, basics again, Python indentation, it is very important. Indentation in Python is very important compared to other languages where indentation is only for readability. But if you don't give indentation in Python, it will always give you an error. And uh, um, it's basically spaces at the beginning of a code line. I will just show you now. It's, it is just like if you're using, suppose, an if statement, 
and you write some condition uh, x equal to 5 wait um, x equal to 5 and x equal to 5 And if you just, it's better you always give indentation like this, just a small space. Hello, Ms. Samara, we can't hear you. Uh, sorry, if I think it got disconnected. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Okay. So I was discussing variables that you don't have to uh, create them. Compared to the other programming languages, there's no command for declaring a variable. You can just assign a value and they will be created. So I just showed you all how it is done. Uh, miss, you don't seem to be sharing this, can Yes. Uh, sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, never mind, it's not clear now. Okay. So you, you see we are using Google Colab uh, so that it's easier for you all to uh, code along with me. So we just uh, used a print statement to get some string printed on the screen. So you see we can run this. And you can see the output. It's connecting. You can see on the right sides. OK, it's connected. And you can see the output. So this is how it's a very small piece of code that uh, made you print the string Python. Now, similarly, we can add uh, more codes and we can give one line, two line codes, and you will get you will get to see the outputs. Before that, let's uh, discuss the operators in Python. So we have uh, various kinds of operators in all the programming languages. Even in Python, we have uh, operators such as arithmetic <laughs> operators. Yes, any problem? Is there an issue? Okay, 
So we were discussing operators in Python. We have arithmetic operators, assignment operators, comparison operators, logical operators. So all these identity operators, these are very much similar to the operators that we use in other programming languages. So one by one, we'll be looking at the operators and I will be discussing this using the code. So it's easier for you all to understand and you can get started with coding. Okay, so now we'll be declaring two variables, num1, which we'll be assigning some values. Num1, num2 is another variable. We are giving a value to it. Okay, now we'll be using the operators of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and you can see the outputs. Okay, we'll be using print command and we have We'll be printing one by one outputs. Number one, num one plus num two. This is basically something that we want to print on our screens. After the quote marks, we write num one plus num two. Okay, so this is a basically a simple addition operator that I'm using to add these two numbers. So we run this. And we see the output. We see the output num, num1 plus num2, which is basically what we wanted to print on a screen, followed with uh, this operator adding number one and num2. Similarly, get it fast. Similarly, I can uh, use subtraction, multiplication, division, and get the outputs for them, num1. Okay, now we have, we can subtract these two numbers using the subtract operator and we can run this. So you see now number one minus number two, we get one. So this is the subtraction of these two numbers. I hope you all are following along. Yes, I have a question. Um, yes. Ms. Uh, yes. When you have written the string, um, after the string num1, num2, um, yes. why do you, within the um, output where you want to write print, why do you repeat that within the, the brackets? Which one? Just Can you say. go back to your um, collab screen? Yes. Okay, Which so, one? so here you have um, print and then you have open bracket num1 plus num2. Why do we not then close the bracket after that? Uh, this is the syntax actually like this is the print uh, command we are giving this quote marks is basically to print it on the screen okay, okay and then what comes after the comma after the comma whatever you operation you want to do right i didn't know i specified only the variables number num1 num2 there are two variables the two numbers i want my uh, addition or subtraction operator to run on and this num1 plus num2 that means i'm telling it to print this okay. thing Yep. Along with the addition operator, I'm specifying the operator. Oh, here. okay. Yes, yes. Fine, yes. fine. Yes, okay. thank you. So, so this is addition, subtraction. Similarly, we can have um, multiplication and division. So I'm multiplying both the numbers. You see I'm changing the operator here between uh, the two numbers. And again, we can run it. And you see num both the numbers multiplied gives us 20 because the numbers are five and four. Similarly, we can do division. You just have to change the division operator here. This is the division operator in Python. And here you're using this to just print it on the screen to show that it's a division operation. You see it, we, give the, we get the answer 1.25. So these were the four uh, operations that we can discuss. We even have another operators like modulus, modulus we have we have floor division we have modulus is basically it gives you the remainder of the uh, numbers that you wish your operation to be for, performed okay so again we can use the modulus modulus operation is this and you can again specify your modulus operation here it will be giving you the remainder of the two numbers uh, used so you see five and four uh, the modulus of 5 modulus 4 gives us 1, which is basically the remainder when divided. So these were all the arithmetic operators um, that we can we discussed. 
we have assignment operators as well assignment operators basically assign values to the variables we already used uh, one such assignment operator you can see num1 equal to 5 so this is nothing but assignment operator we have another assignment operators uh, like num1 equal to num1 plus 1 suppose we write this so instead of writing uh, the variable again two times as you can see we can just specify it one time using the assignment operator like this so it's basically the variable uh, followed with the plus equal to one so this is how you can see this is one of the assignment operators and for you can even have uh, the subtraction followed with the assignment operator multiplication followed with assignment uh, and modulus with assignment okay let's try to run one of them uh, so it's easier we can check it in the code okay let me just remove this okay now let me print uh, the num1 again num1 plus and I print my num again okay so you see I got six because my num1 value was five you can see here five and using the assignment operator addition and assignment operator I added one uh, to my already existing number so it gave me six so this is one of the assignment similarly you can uh, do minus you can do subtraction with assignment and um, division with assignment, modulus with assignment, and so on. So these were um, your assignment operators. Now we move to the comparison operators. Comparison operators is basically checking, uh, comparing two values. It, they can be equal, one can be lesser than that, greater than that, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. So one such example, let me uh, share one example with you. Suppose we are numbers num1 and num2. We can compare them using uh, number num1 greater than or equal to num2. OK, then we write this. If num1 is greater than num2, And here we have to write I hope you all are following along. Okay. I hope you all can see my screen. No, we actually cannot. Okay, just click. I hope you can see now. Okay, yes. So to check the compare comparison operators, we have an if condition. If num one is greater than or equal to Number two, print that num1 is greater than num2. OK, don't forget the quote marks. Get it printed. Run this. Uh, what does it say? Syntax. OK, yes, we need to put a semicolon. Whenever we are putting an if condition, we will see to that once we uh, learn about the flow control. Indentation. 
Yes, we are missing the indentation. This is I'm trying to show you how we can get errors if we don't uh, use if we don't take indentation seriously in Python. Yes, so now we got the output. Uh, if my number one is greater than num two, it is greater five is greater than four. So hence this print statement is getting executed. So this was comparison operators. Similarly, we have less than equal to equal to logical operators. Now we have logical operators. Uh, some of you who might be knowing about logic, we have uh, logical operators and or not XOR. So all these operators can be used in Python as well. OK, now we have identity objects. So in identity operators, we can compare the objects uh, if they are equal or if they're not equal. Basically, they are not the same object uh, with the same memory location. We have membership operators. We have bitwise operators. Uh, membership operators basically check in a list. List we will be learning uh, as we move forward. List is basically a data types in Python. We'll be learning about it. Uh, just to know that membership operators check if that particular uh, value is present in the list or not. Just similar to X and Y. Is X present in Y? Y can be a list or any object that we'll be seeing further. Then we have bitwise operators, which are similar to your logical logical operators and or or not, but it is just that they work on bits. They first convert your numbers to bits and then they perform the logical operate operations. Okay, now we, dis we discussed how variables are created. We don't have to create them. Uh, we just have to uh, assign values to them for comments. Now, whenever you want to comment a particular Python statement, you just have to, uh, whatever statement you, ha you have, you just have to uh, just put a hash mark in front of that. Like suppose you have this statement and you want to comment this, you don't, you don't want to include it in, in, in your code. So what you will do is you simply uh, put a hash um, hash fund number and it will just uh, comment the whole print statement. So this was about comments. Now we have data types in Python. So similar to other programming languages, there are some similar uh, data types, but few of them uh, are data types which are only present in Python and not in other languages. So till now, is it clear? I hope it's clear. If there are any questions, uh, you can ask me. Are you, did you all uh, understand about the variables, the comments, or the arithmetic operators we used, the logical operators? Okay. But if it's clear, but can you can you maybe link that to sort of like a real world value? Like where would we see that in operation? Okay, which uh, which operators? Because I discussed the um, assignment and uh, the you want the logical operators? Yeah, no, I'm just um, wondering, like, if we had to sort of explain this, like, in terms of uh, real world examples, like, where would people be using this, like, in programs or things like this? Okay, like the operators. Yeah. Usually, whenever there are multiple conditions, uh, we use these operators uh, when we have complex programming. Or maybe mm -hmm. it's a simple example would be if you want to do a, uh, write a pro Python program which involves addition of two numbers. Not a, not only two numbers. It can be any number of uh, numbers that we want to add. Okay, so for, for example, if we wanted to create a program where we were totaling up employee salaries, for example. Exactly, exactly. Okay, all right, yes, yes. If yes. you want to add the employees of all the salaries, sim mm -hmm. you can just use the addition operator, which is an arithmetic operator, and you can get your work done. Okay, great. Yes. Okay, now we have uh, data types in Python. So these are basically the data types available. You have numeric uh, data type, you have dictionaries, sets, uh, boolean, all these are data types. You'll be discussing these data types one by one. So let's uh, look forward to the numbers. Numbers is a data type in, used in Python. We have three numeric types in Python. We have int, float, and complex. So I think most of these uh, programming languages have the same uh, data types. You have int, float, and complex. But the difference is that we don't have to specify the data type of this, uh, data type of the variables in Python. Uh, th this is simply uh, detected by the Python itself. Sim just how we saw, 
I didn't have to specify int num the variables I made num1 and num2. I didn't have to specify that this is integer. You can see in the starting. I simply gave them the value and they were created. Okay. So we have uh, these data types in float complex, and also we can convert one data type to another using the int function, float function, or complex. Suppose you want to uh, uh, convert, just a sec. Okay, suppose you want to convert any number. Yes, suppose you have it, you can, we can write a code to check that, print. Now it's a string. Um, let me, yes. It's a string is Python. Or two, we have taken as an input. If you take it as an input and we want to convert this string into int. So we simply use the int function and we our string is converted. So if you want, let's take the variable that we already uh, So this is how we can convert. The string can be converted using the int function. And similarly, float, we can convert um, maybe in, again integer 2 into float. Or we can convert something like this. We can be complex. Complex is another data type. It is basically which involves in uh, imaginary numbers. Numbers like 2 plus i, 2 plus 3i. This is what is known as uh, complex numbers. Complex. Now, again, we have something like 2.0. So we ca can convert all these uh, data types um, using the int, float, and complex functions. OK, next we have strings. Strings is, again, similar to other programming languages. Uh, they are basically a collection of words. Uh, strings in Python are surrounded by either single quotation marks or double quote marks. Just like how we saw, uh, you can see. I wrote this print statement num1 plus num2. So you can see I quoted them using double quotes. You can even quote them uh, using single quotes. Print, maybe we can write something like Python is fun. So you see, we can quote it using single or double. Can even go for single quote marks, or you can go for the double ones. Okay, so we can run this. You see, it is executed. Then we have sequence operations on strings as well. So just like we have uh, operations on numbers, we have uh, string operations, we have concatenation, we have repetition, slicing, and indexing. So let me uh, one by one show you. We can start with concatenation first. Suppose I create two strings, string one, let me keep it S1 equal to Python. Let me take it small. Okay, please remember that Python is case sensitive if you're using a variable and declaring a value, a string value to it. So you have to specify if it is um, the uppercase or lowercase and use it accordingly. Okay, Python and another one I can take is, is Java. Okay. So now these are the two strings created. I want to perform concatenation on them. So let me print uh, S, S1 plus S2. This I want to print on the screen. And S1 plus S2. Similar to numbers, again, you can string, you can perform the concatenation operator that is a, sim, a plus, and you can add the strings. Let me run this. Yes. So you can see S1 plus S2 is something that I wanted to print, print on the screen. And S1 plus S2 simply added Python and Java. Uh, it's a concatenation. It added both of the strings. Similarly, we have repetition. Now, what is repetition? Repetition is any string that you want to repeat a specific number of times. So what can we do is 
you could just uh, copy this. You can write the code along. I just want to make it fast. S1. I want to repeat it. So let me write repetition in here. This one I can write a multiplication into two. So let's see what happens. Okay, now you see uh, repetition is printed with S1 into two. That means I want my string one to be repeated two times, Python, Python. I hope uh, all of you, I, uh, I hope you all are coding along. Okay, so this was repetition. We can see, we just have a few minutes so we can go and see the Another one, slicing operation, string operation. Okay, let's see what exactly is slicing. Suppose we have our two strings, S1 and S2. Slicing operation, basically, suppose this is a string one. String one is Python. So you can get a particular subset of the string using the slicing operation. Okay, so S1, I, I want a subset of the string. My S1 is Python. I want uh, the number, the indexes. Okay, now here I want to uh, tell you like uh, the strings usually follow an index type of, uh, type of way. That means this Python, uh, P usually starts with the zero, like the position of P is zero, Y will be one and so on. So now if I want a particular, suppose I want, uh, uh, my subset of string from T to N. So I'll be giving the starting position and end position. So my starting position will be two comma five. So I've specified my starting position. So let me try to run this. Okay, wait, I need to, just a second, string indices must be integers. Okay, I did not write the print statement. Print. Yes. What does it say? Indices must be integers. That's the issue. Just let me sort this out. We were discussing slicing to this has to work. Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, while in the, the syntax, it should be a semicolon instead of commas. Okay. So it's basically not slicing. Okay, I hope you can get the output. The screen is not shared anymore. Yes, screen is not shared? Uh, it was shared, but just no, it's like not. Minutes ago, it All right, just a sec. Okay, uh, now is, is it visible? I'm sure, I don't know what was, okay. I hope it's visible now. Uh, so we discussed concatenation. Yeah. Yes? Miss Samira, it's still not, not visible. visible. Yes? No, no, it's still not visible. It's still not visible. 
I think it should be visible now. It is now. Okay, okay. So, any questions? I hope you followed along the sequence operation. We discussed concatenation, repetition, slicing. Any questions so far? Yes, I have a question. Uh, I. Yes. Can you please repeat the slicing part? Okay, I think uh, the screen was stopped, so. I'm not able to share my uh, notebook. So put a notebook just a second. I'm sorting this out. Okay. Uh, um, let me just uh, show you the code then. Okay, uh, so for slicing, like I was, I took the one string one, and uh, you have to indicate the first and the last position of the substring that you want to get printed. So suppose we have uh, something like Python here. So the second is the string, uh, second is the character. That means it starts from zero, one, two. So it will get, it will be printed from T to the complete set. Like the last position will be seven. Okay, anyways, uh, we will be seeing this uh, slicing and indexing from the, in the next session. I'll, start, I'll continue from exactly here and I can show it in the code. Not able to share the Jupyter notebook with you. Okay, uh, so I'll just wrap up this session now. We can continue with slicing and indexing uh, in tom tomorrow. I will try and I'll share the Jupyter notebook because uh, there's some issue in sharing the Jupyter. Doctor, how can I see the recorded class? Recorded class? Uh Uh, uh, regarding the recording, we will be posting it on the YouTube link um, for the Ida Lab, and we will share the link on the WhatsApp group. Mr. Mayor, we can't hear you. I believe uh, Ms. Amir is having audio issues. Um, thank you everyone for joining. This was our first session today. Um, and it's inshallah, we have two more sessions tomorrow and day after, and that will be the continuation of the beginner Python series. Um, we hope to see you tomorrow, inshallah. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, I was disconnected actually.
Okay, thank you so much uh, for attending this session. See you all tomorrow. Good day.